This video is about styling my kitchen island, and I have this Lazy Susan or turntable as my starting point. I also have three glass vases that I want to use as a centerpiece, but neither the glass vases nor this turntable are the right color. But that's why we have DIY decor channels, right? I'm Anna. I thrifted this for less than $7 and I'm going to make it match my kitchen. But first, I need a strip off competition. I really mean that. I have three strippers here and I need to see which one of them strips the best. Allow me to introduce my strippers. First, I have Citrus Strip. I think Citrus Strip is great for stripping through paint. It kind of like bubbles it up and raises and it can come off really nicely. And it has a pretty decent orange smell. And my stripper number two is my first stripper, Clean Strip. Now this one can get through several layers at once, but it stinks so bad. It's, it's actually disgusting, the smell, but it works well. And now number three, Easy Strip. I've never used this one, but it says it's professional strength and low VOC. So these three are gonna compete on stripping through this Lazy Susan. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've had some stripper confusion today. I actually have four strippers. Who would have thought? But this isn't the one I wanted to use today to compare with against the others. This one is. This is called Jasco. I don't know if I've ever heard of anyone else using it. It stinks horrendously, but works so well. That's why I want to compare it to the other two. So we are going to be using this red can of Jasco. And my clean strip stripper is, well, he gets a day off today. All right, time for our very scientific stripping test. Ralph has taken the turntable apart so it's nice and solid. And I have my three strippers and we're going to strip. All I'm going to do is just pour the stripper on and let it sit. And while it's sitting, it's gonna be covered in some saran wrap. I put on the stinky stripper, the thinnest. So to be fair, I'm gonna add a little more, even though I have to deal with that smell. Ugh. As you can see, it's already stripping. The reason I'm covering it with saran is just so it doesn't dry out. It's been 15 minutes and I wanna check how this is going. Ooh, Citrus Strip did a good job. And really, only after 15 minutes? That looks pretty good. Now for Jasco Premium Paint and Epoxy Remover. Hmm, left a little more, it's like stuck on a little more. Okay. And now for the Easy Strip. Easy Strip feels the gummiest. Stripper award time. And today's winner is Citrus Strip. I'm a bit surprised. I didn't think it would do this good of a job. I mean, I have used it before, but never in comparison. So it just did the most unified stripping across the board. I do have to say the runner up would be McStinky Face here. It seemed to get down to wood the best. Like it got to the most natural wood color. There's still a little bit of stain here on Citrus Strip, but this one I can see spots where it really got right down to bare wood. And then Easy Strip over there. Mm. I mean, he, he left a lot behind. So if I had to spend money, it would be these two and this guy. I know he says he's professional, but mm, he's fine. Like in a pinch, I guess I would use it. I'm gonna use the whole jug up, but in a pinch, yeah. But for now, Citrus Strip is our winner. And because Citrus Strip is our stripper winner, I'm gonna finish it off with another coat of Citrus Strip. Once I was done with all the stripping, I cleaned the whole turntable with mineral spirits and let it dry overnight. Now it's a blank slate. The top I want to stain and the bottom I want to paint. So the only thing I need to do to the bottom is just give it a quick sand with like 220 paper just to kind of scuff up the shininess. But the top, I don't want to just stain it. I want to age it. I want to kind of give it like a beat up old look. 
So my first step in that is just to sand this with 80 grit paper. Here's what you need to do to give wood a faux aged look. Use a nail to make little holes. This gives the wood that wormy maple look. Then you step it up by hammering a metal chain into the wood. Now you go over the top and just hit that hammer randomly all over your piece. Use both ends of the hammer. Switch over to a wire brush. Remember to keep changing directions and give the edges a good scrubbing. You might think this is enough, but no. Grab a screwdriver and make scratches and gouges. Lastly, you soften that all up with a good run of 220 grit sandpaper. I use both a power sander and hand sanding. Since I had my sanding supplies out, I also sanded the shiny finish off the base. The stain I'm using is called chocolate. I have used this before, and even though I love the color, I know that I need many, many coats. Now move on to painting the base. The top is right behind me, it's drying. I'm going to leave it overnight before I can wax it, but let's paint. I'm using the leftover fusion mineral paint that I have. I love painting with this stuff, it's just so nice. And I just have my little dollar store brush that, I don't know, for some reason, these are so good. I wish I could get like a whole set of them. Okay, let's paint, enough about my brush. Yes, this is the underside, the part that no one will ever, ever see, but I know it's there and I like to finish the entire project. I know that's a little ridiculous. And I like painting, so everything gets painted in my world. Even the parts nobody ever, ever sees. Finally, the last step before I can put the turntable together. I'm gonna wax both pieces. The top piece I'm gonna wax with this Dark Wax by Bear. I like to use this because it gets into all the grooves and dings that I made and it kind of helps with that faux aging process. And the bottom, even though I painted it with fusion mineral paint, I still want to seal it because it's in the kitchen and I'm just going to use a clear wax. And it's a really nice day outside, I think. It looks really nice. So I want to do this waxing outside. the turntable is done, I can put it together. Mm. I actually didn't take it apart, Ralph did, so I had to um, Google how to put it back together, only to realize that the bearings are on both sides, and I was trying to figure out if the bearings go, like one goes on the, if it, like, if the bearings go on the top or on the bottom. Yeah, so I spent some time Googling trying to figure it out, and really, it's just a disc with bearings on both sides, but I think it goes up like this. So I'm gonna try that, and then Ralph will watch this video and realize I did it wrong, and then he'll fix it. Story of my life. These are the vases that I'm using for my centerpiece and they're just clear glass and that's just not gonna work for me. So I get a spray paint, which is like one of my favorite things to do. And I have two cans of spray paint here. They're both white, but this one is a glossy finish and this one is a matte finish. 
So I'm going to use them in different ways to give each glass vase a different pattern or style. But first, before I get to spray painting, I have to take off all the stickers and give these a really good clean because I want my paint to stick. This glass vase or container pretty much designs itself. I'm going to spray paint the lid glossy. And then the base is gonna be done in the matte finish. Simple, but cute. And now on to vase number two. This one I'm gonna spray almost the entire thing in the glossy finish and then just do a little bit of freehand spraying at the bottom of the matte finish. And now vase number three. My plan here is to spray paint the whole thing matte, like the matte finish, and then have a band, like a really distinct, sharp edged band of the glossy around the bottom. We'll see how that goes. To get this bottom room glossy with a sharp finish, I need to tape it off and then cover the rest of the vase. Vases one and three turn out exactly how I had in mind. Vase number two, I thought it would be glossy on the top and then fade to the matte finish, but I ended up with a satin finish overall. It's not what I had in mind, but I don't mind it at all. The vases in total cost $8.47, plus two cans of spray paint, which I already had on hand because, well, I always have spray paint on hand. And I didn't even use one full can of spray paint. Add the turntable, which was less than $7 and whatever materials I spent on that, I think for less than $20, I have a centerpiece. That's why thrifting is so awesome. Now, when Ralph came home, he kind of spun the turntable and said, it doesn't spin the way it did before. It's not as smooth. And I said, well, that's because I put it together. So yes, Ralph is going to take it apart and fix it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Remember to leave a comment, give this video a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe. I'll see you soon with another project. I don't know, now I have like people there. Where'd those people come from? I look little green men. Ah, uh, whatever. This camera just changes its settings. Like when I walk away. Whatever. Great for stripping through, no, 